Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, A Painter's Vlog. Um, I decided that today I was going to share a few tips and tricks with you regarding stretching a proper canvas. So to my left I have some of the materials, almost all of the materials that you'll need to accomplish this task and I'm going to be laying over some footage that I took stretching my newest canvas for the next piece in my series, American Displacement. Um, I really can't wait to share that piece with you, by the way. It's about my, f okay, I can't tell you the secrets. But, so obviously you're gonna need canvas. Um, I usually get a nice, heavy weight cotton duck canvas. Um, I can't really afford linen right now, even though I, I really much prefer linen because of the smoothness and the nice texture to the canvas. But this is your standard cotton duck. Um, and I believe it's pretty thick. If I remember correctly, it was 15 something. Um, but anyway, so you're going to need your canvas. And um, I much prefer stretching canvas with a pair of canvas pliers. This is the Fredericks version, a little more expensive than the other basic one you can find. But this one's awesome. It has the rubber, the rubber handles and this cool little wire spring. And you can take that spring out actually. So, but anyway, um, you'll see in the video what I do with these puppies. So, and then if your canvas is wrinkled, you can actually get a, an iron and iron the canvas out. So what I do is I spray the canvas and this is just what I do. So don't take my word for it. This could be terrible. I don't know. But this is what I do. This is what works for me because I have dealt with wrinkling issues in the past and I had to completely restretch the entire piece of canvas. So what I do um, if the canvas is wrinkled is I'll spray it with water and then I will put the iron on the cotton option and iron the wrinkles up. So that's optional, up to you. It depends on how you keep your canvas. I tend to keep mine folded up over near my clothing. So then lastly, I highly recommend that you get yourself a Power Stanley staple gun. Don't go with the traditional one, okay? Just don't. This is gonna save your hands so much, your hands and your wrists, just as well as the Frederick players. It's really gonna, you know, just, it's not going to be so painful on your fingers and it's going to be a much easier job. Lastly, of course, you're going to need the Stanley nails. All right. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is I am cutting the canvas. So I've measured the canvas out and, um, for this, for this particular painting, it's a perfect square. So I measure the canvas out and then um, because I'm not sure if a future buyer is going to want the piece as is or if they're going to want to stretch it on a canvas. So I leave four inches on every side. So say your canvas is 30 inch, you want your image to be 30 by 30, then your canvas is going to be cut 38 to 38. Pretty simple. So once you get your canvas cut, you're going to measure all of your sides on the on the textured side of the canvas that's a little bit smoother than the opposite side and you'll be you'll see it if you look up close but honestly either or doesn't really matter so once you have that then you're going to iron out the wrinkles if necessary and then I have a big pre-cut piece of wood that my boyfriend cut for me and I'm pretty much been stapling all of my canvases onto that so I lay it flat and then I'll staple one side, the opposite side, the opposite side, the opposite side. You'll totally see from the video, but basically you, you keep going around. So then your second staple will be two to the sides of that first staple. So one and one, one and one, one and one, and one and one. And you're going to work your way all the way around the canvas until it's done. Um, making sure to stretch a little bit outward and pulling it a little bit tight and so it's nice and taut, but not pulling so tight as to compromise the integrity of the, the fibers of the canvas. So you'll know exactly, you'll get a feel for it after a while. Basically after that, I bring it into my studio and then I will get my gesso. I love using the golden acrylic gesso and it's devised for acrylics or oils. And I, I use this pretty much for every canvas. I usually put about five or six layers down. Now, put a light on the canvas as you're gessoing because you 
you want to keep your brush strokes as minimal as possible. So I usually brush to the right and to the left and then up and down. And then once that layer is dry, I'll take a medium to fine grit sandpaper. I'll sand it once and then I'll take a fine or extra fine second sanding. So I'll go wax on the whole time and then wax off the whole time. And then you can add your other layer. So one, and you're gonna do that same step between each layer of gesso. So once you have about five or six layers, that should be perfect and you're ready to rock. The reason for the gesso is so the oil doesn't seep into the fabric of the canvas and rot your painting. So I hope that you'll use my methodologies um, stretching your next painting. It's extremely important that you get it right, right from the beginning to maintain the integrity of your works over time. You are going to be here for the long run. The most important thing is longevity as an artist to me. So just remember that with the materials that you choose and the way that you're stretching your canvases. So if you found this video in any way valuable, please click the like button below and be sure to share with someone you know that might need help with this area. All right, thank you so much.